everybody and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today you can see I'm just painting a canvas with some black and white that I mixed up here. I've, I've been going through a lot of this lately and finding it to be a really beautiful um, underpainting on my canvas and uh, I recommend this guys. I find the colors show up nicer than if you're painting on white or straight black. Uh, it's just kind of the perfect color that works for almost any painting. So I'm going to finish this up and then dry it off and we'll start with this tutorial. Now while this is drying, I'm going to take a few minutes just to sh take you guys around my studio. You guys are always requesting um, to see some of the paintings a bit closer up through my studio. My studio is uh, really messy right now. It's kind of chaotic. That's how I work. Uh, I want you guys to see what it's really like in here. I don't want to dress it up or, you know, make it try to make it look perfect for YouTube. This is real. This is the real life of an artist, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys can relate. So if you can, if you're kind of a chaotic, messy painter like me, and your studio looks like this, leave a comment below. So I'll just show you this side this is my desk where i um, deal with customers and you can see how messy it is right now i've been using it for my resin area i work a lot with resin and throughout covid i have had my studio closed my shop closed so i just have been using this area as a crafting tabletop and it works really really well Got some little dog treats in here for Tilly. And this is the first wall. I've got paintings on that side too. The view out my window, beautiful jungle of ivy out there that I really, really love. Makes me feel like I'm in a little fairy tale world here. So this studio of mine is actually an old garage that we converted. We, my husband, <laughs> my husband's wonderful. He's so supportive and he's great at carpentry and building. Um, converted this space into my shop and my studio. Well, I've got some more lights up here. I'll turn these spotlights on. So you can see I've got, I'm running out of wall space. I've got paintings everywhere. I have my little cards here, little seashells that are my little resin projects and they make uh, great uh, ornaments. A lot of these paintings you might recognize from um, videos and tutorials here on my channel. If you recognize any or if you've painted along to any of them, leave it in the comment below. I'm always curious to know which ones you guys have enjoyed painting along with me. So as you can see, I've got some larger prints here and piles and piles of paintings. And it doesn't stop here in this gallery. My house is full of my artwork as well. You know, when you're passionate about something, you do it a lot, right? So painting takes up a lot of room. And I find it hard to get rid of my paintings. But lately, especially in the last week, I've been out of campus. So I've been um, painting over older canvases that uh, I don't really like anymore. Sorry, I just have to step over some quartz <laughs> to get back to my filming area here. But there you have it, guys. There's my messy studio. I left one area out behind my desk where I've got a bunch of um, supplies and 
um, packaging and everything kind of tossed about and I'm too embarrassed to show you guys that area. Um, so let's get on with this painting. I think this is probably just about dry. Now you can see little hints of uh, the underpainting that I've got. I painted over a butterfly scene with cherry blossoms and the paint was really thick in some areas so it's causing some texture to this painting but I've said this before uh, I mentioned this a lot use that to your advantage if you can't get any canvas and you have to paint over an old one and you left those bumps and you're kind of freaking out like oh no I can't use this canvas no you can it's really interesting actually it adds for some interesting texture to your paintings afterwards so kind of just try to be creative in a way that you can use that for your painting and I'll show you how to do that today so stay tuned just hit subscribe and let's get started with this tutorial I'm going to begin with this number 10 colorantic stippling oval mop brush you can use any mop brush that you want or stipple brush I'm going to use this for coverage and I'm also going to use it to tap in for some texture and that and I'm using titanium white today. I get it from Michaels. I wait till they've got a sale. Michaels is great. They've always got lots of great sales there. I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet. So I'm going to just take some white here. I've got a little bit left over from my last painting. And I'm going to start here in the center. I'm going to add a little bit of soft light, just crisscrossing. Obviously you can see my brush isn't too wet, otherwise it would be dripping. This is a really very light, thin layer. I want to add here, just like I said, for a little bit of light. I'm going to start adding a little bit of cadmium yellow light hue. I won't wash my brush off. I'll be using a little bit of black okay, so without washing my brush off right into that yellow load both sides. And now I'm going to start on the outer edges of where I left off of the white and then work my way in to the white. back and forth, back and forth, side to side, and we'll have water down here. So for bushes, tapping, little crisscross, rougher looking texture. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit more white, a little bit more white before I go back into my yellow and black, and I'm going to add A little bit more light in here. And then we can tap a little bit. Pull a little bit white and yellow just down here. Pull some light into our water. Now I'm going to take black with my yellow. I'm going to make a deep, dark olive green. I'm going to start stippling in for some trees. up a little bit more here. Could be a little bit lighter or darker than this. It doesn't matter. And I'll start coming in on this side. Where we want to have it a little bit lighter or brighter, I'll add a little bit more yellow. And we can add some some highlights. 
If you don't have a mop brush or a, or a stipple type of a brush, you really need to get one. They're why I love painting so much. I used to watch Bob Ross. And even though he was a oil painter and I'm an acrylic painter, the same rule applies, same brush stroke. With what's left over in my brush, pull across on the edge, a little bit of black, and right underneath, bring in that contrast and shadow from the side. Simple, simple, right guys? I'm gonna switch over to my next brush, brush, which is a number two round. And it's time to start adding some tree trunks and branches. So you wanna make sure you get your brush really wet. I'm gonna take some black, just a little bit of that greenish color that I made with the yellow. Mostly black though, because we want this to be thick and dark. So I'll just start coming in here a little bit wider on the bottom and then in and around sometimes kind of skipping over to get a really nice tight point to the end of your brush twist and roll so you can get more of a finer look to some of the branches and by all means, use a liner brush if you want. A lot of first timers find it hard to use a liner brush, and it really can be. I'm gonna make the base of the tree thicker, of course, and I like to have it kind of come out like this. And then you can twist and roll and gently pull your brush to make those neat, crooked looking branches. I really like this light gray color underneath right there. Okay, the next thing I want to do, I'm not going to, this actually looks really pretty. I'm not going to do too, too much more to it. Um, I need to have a couple of waterfalls though in the distance there. You guys know I love waterfalls. So I'll do a few of those and I'm going to use one of my angle, some people call it a dagger brush either is is correct uh, this is a number 10 and sorry I don't know the make of these brushes they don't have a name on them or anything I just got a big set of them on Amazon a few years ago for like $30 and there was a lot of brushes in them they're great I'm gonna get my brush a little bit wet pick up some white and this is gonna be hazy and, and foggy kind of in the background so I'm not gonna I want it to just look very subtle. So, oh, let's just start right about here, just with a corner of my brush. We'll do a few little scumbly types of waterfalls. You don't have to do a lot or overwork it to get that nice effect. Sometimes less is more. A little bit of water there to work with loosen that paint up so sometimes you can turn it to make more of those streams that are coming down and around the rocks and then start to turn your brush over to make different widths
I'm gonna go over this light area here, some more white. And then add a little hint of that down below here. And I'll just lift this up so we can make sure the top of the painting is visible for you guys. We have a little bit of gray up there. We can just kind of dust over here. So it kind of gradually goes into that light. But you could add more, more or less waterfalls if you wanted. Uh, I'm pretty happy with how this looks as is. Um, it's probably one of the quicker paintings that I've done, but I hope this shows you guys that you don't need to take hours and hours um, to achieve a simple but effective and pretty landscape like this. Just the underpainting is light gray and just using black, white, and cadmium yellow. Very limited palette today with only a few brushes. So I'll list everything below the video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment or question below. I'm happy to connect with you guys. And I'll see you soon in another video. Take care, everybody, and happy painting. Bye!